Let's begin with a little thought exercise. Maybe you'll even raise your hands again. How many of you work or have worked at a place where you were given technology and services that you were required to use in order to be effective in your job? Laptop, smartphone, email, software. Okay. What was memorable about the last time you interacted with the group of people that provided those services to you, your corporate IT services group? How likely would you be to say something positive about that group? Good. Well, so when I have this conversation with people, uh, I usually get best case scenario, some eye rolling, worst case scenario, a long diatribe of complaints and terrible stories and sometimes expletives. At which point I say, hi, I'm Praveen Nath. I'm the chief information officer at Stanford Healthcare. I'm responsible for that. And we'd really like to make that better. People say, good luck with that. But I really think that can be better. And I'd like to spend some time talking with you about that today. Because I believe that personalized medicine begins with a personalized customer experience. And at Stanford Healthcare, let's see. At Stanford Healthcare, the customer experience is incredibly important to us. When our CEO, Amir Rubin, uh, arrived a few years ago, and you heard from him uh, on the first day of this conference, he looked at the patient experience and said, this, this can be a lot better. Uh, even in an academic medical center, even with all of its complexity, this can be better. And people said, good luck with that. But look what happened. In just a few years, we went from the 45th percentile to the 94th percentile in patient satisfaction with all of the complexity and all the same infrastructure. Now, there's a lot behind this story, a lot of work by a lot of uh, people and a lot of great leadership. But I want to talk to you about the personalization part. The personalization of the patient experience is the moment when the patient knows that his or her needs are the only thing that matter. And when that happens, those personalized experiences are what create the memories. The memories are what create loyalty, and loyalty creates the lifelong relationship with Stanford Healthcare. And that lifelong relationship is how we build the shared commitment with the patient to, to achieve better health. So how does a CIO make an impact on this? Well, first, we have to understand who the customers are. We have our internal customers, our captive customers. Those are the people like you when you're thinking about you have to use this equipment, these devices to do your job every day. These are the doctors, the nurses, the pharmacists, the billers, the people who take care of patients. They use our technology to take care of patients. These internal customers, they need to be happy and productive. Happy and productive. They need their experiences with us to be accretive to the culture of the organization, where they feel connected to Stanford Healthcare because Stanford Healthcare provides an environment where they can be successful making people well. Happy and productive. But they also have to be safe and compliant. We have to keep them safe and compliant. In an industry, which is one of the most regulated industries, at a time when information security is under the greatest threats that we've ever seen. Happy and productive, safe and compliant. And happy and productive, is no longer measured by big enterprise software deployments where you go to work and think I have the best tools because it's an enterprise tool, right? Happy is measured by what you get to experience in the consumer world. It's what the companies in Silicon Valley are developing. The hardware and the software that's available at very, very low cost, sometimes free, that makes you happy. So that's how we're benchmarked. And people say you can't have happy and productive and safe and compliant at the same time. They're two opposite things. You get one or you get the other, or maybe neither. Well, that's the space we live in. That's the work we're doing for our internal customers, is to create that environment of happy and productive and safe and compliant. And if we do it right, then they don't need to call us because when something's wrong, because nothing ever goes wrong. But if they do call us and they have an experience with us that's a good experience, the memory is about the experience, not the fact that they needed help in the first place. So if we do this well, we get internal customer loyalty. Internal customer loyalty drives external customer loyalty. Who are the external customers? That's you. Patients, family members, employers, people in the community, the people we serve. Now, we're increasingly in the business of providing technology now directly to external customers. That's a new role for the CIO. We do this. Uh, through our portals and various other technologies that connect your life to your healthcare in a personalized way. 
not just for virtual care, but that's important, but through the entire continuum of what we at Stanford HealthCare call clicks to bricks, because we're available virtually when that's what you want, but we're also available physically when that's what you need for a diagnostic test, a procedure, or some other element of the human connection. And our portals and our tools, they have to span that entire continuum. And so it's a journey, but we think we're doing part of this well because personalized online engagement nets higher patient satisfaction. We've seen this in the data. The people who use our tools and our portals are the happiest group of our patients. So how do we do this? We have a very complex environment that we run. We have over 500 pieces of software connected together with thousands of interfaces moving information around all day. We have to be really careful about what we choose to put into this environment to make sure that it will work well, right? So we're systems integrators. That's, that's what we do. And we choose our partnerships with vendors carefully. We have many vendor partnerships. We work really hard to make those products work in our environment. And along the way, quite often, we make the products better as a result of that work. These are some of our partners. We use Epic for electronic health record. We use Adobe and Amazon Web Services for our web properties, LivePerson for online chat, and Box as our collaboration platform. Box has been in the news lately. I would tell you a little bit about Box as an illustrative example. We went to Box and we said, we have a problem. We have a collaboration problem. It's really hard to collaborate across the multiple silos of an academic medical center. Can you help us with that? And Box said, yes, we, we do that. We provide great collaboration software. And we said, we know that. We like your software because it has consumer-grade usability. Consumer-grade usability. And we said, but we need help with something else. We need enterprise-grade controls because just collaboration isn't enough to help us. We need to keep people happy and productive and safe and compliant. So we said, we need help with endpoint encryption checking to help us be compliant with HIPAA safe harbor requirements. And Box said, okay, we don't exactly know what that is, but we want to be in healthcare, so we want to partner with you to help do that. So we got together and defined what those solutions are to build consumer-grade usability, enterprise-grade controls, put the two together. And we said to Box, you give us the enterprise-grade controls, we promise we won't screw up your consumer-grade usability when we deploy it in our environment. So that's an example of a partnership that works for us. Now, Box, Amazon, LivePerson, these are cloud providers. We love using cloud providers. Our first choice is always to go to the cloud. It's not always easy for us. You've heard about the clinical genomic service that's being built at uh, Stanford HealthCare. This is in its nascent stages now. Defining what that means, we don't want to be in the business of high-performance computing because we think other people will do that better. But how that applies to actually creating a brand new clinical genomic service is a bit unclear. And a lot of partners, when they, when they contemplate this, say, wow, the size and scope of the amount of protected health information that's going to live in our cloud is unbelievable. And the liability that goes along with that, we didn't really get what we were getting into when we said we want to be in healthcare. So it's tricky. It's a journey. We absolutely are moving to the cloud, but we're finding that many cloud providers aren't quite as ready as they think they are to be in healthcare. So what about our external software? So we've redesigned our web platform to be simple, clean, search-centric user experience designed with one audience in mind, the patient. That's not easy to do in a complex academic medical center environment. We have portal tools that allow the connectivity that I've mentioned before. And I'm really excited to tell you that we have just launched our first mobile app that absolutely connects your life to Stanford Healthcare you can download this app right now from the Apple Store. This app provides full mobile connectivity, transactions, scheduling, see your results, online video visits, integration through HealthKit with other connected devices to bring that in and really help create that personalized care environment. So a brand new app. This just went onto the App Store yesterday. It's not just about technology, though. Right? The technology enables this, but it's about changing the way we organize ourselves around care. So let me tell you just a bit about that. In January, we launched ClickWell Care. It's a completely online primary care clinic. So we have doctors dedicated to doing nothing but online primary care for people who find this kind of service useful. Using the tools that I've told you about, you can see your doctor in a completely virtual encounter. 
You can, you can schedule, you can book, you can check all of your results. You can have video visits, connected devices. We can now bring the information in and monitor it. We have wellness coaches, just to name a few things that are in part of this program. In addition, we're engaging in a lot of efforts to build patient engagement through transparency. So just another is open notes. When you see doctors in our primary care clinics, we're launching a feature now where you can use our portal to actually read the physician note. Not just see your test results, not just know your medications, but actually read the entire clinical encounter as the doctor's written it to connect you in a personal way with the entire healthcare delivery experience. And in a couple of weeks, we're going to launch on our website, furthering this goal of transparency, patient ratings and comments of physicians displayed transparently on our publicly facing website so that we can help patients personalize their care by empowering their choices about how they want to get care and from whom. So we think that we're a pretty good test bed for doing this kind of work. We have over a million outpatient visits a year, a lot of hits to our website, a lot of unique users logging in to use our new tools, 10,000 lives in an accountable care organization, a new acute care hospital opening in 2018, employer on-site clinics, and some of the world's greatest doctors and scientists to help study how all this stuff starts to work together. But we can't do it alone. We need partners, and uh, we, we need partners who can work with us to solve our problems, right? Problems that we best understand, like the box example, problems that resonate with us. We need partners who understand healthcare and the system complexity of healthcare understand, have either worked in healthcare or are willing to embed themselves in our environment and, and learn about what does the electronic health record do, what does it not do, which space should we live in there, what connected devices are actually going to be valuable, who's going to even want to pay attention to that data, and partners who can execute and help us move faster. So what does this look like in the future? We've been thinking a lot about that. Where does this go as it matures? We've been thinking about it in, particularly in the context of our new hospital, which will, op as I mentioned, will open in 2018. It's a real privilege to be part of the ecosystem at Stanford Healthcare and here in Silicon Valley, helping us to heal humanity through science and compassion one patient at a time. Thank you.